uh, Reese Kendall and oh maybe three oh maybe maybe I'm wrong well let's let's get the game underway and we'll, we'll see I wonder I wonder what we're going to play today yeah who knows it could be a, a total change of formation style could be a totally unrecognisable Geisley side as Ashton gets underway and come forward immediately Kasani puts a ball into the box but it's gathered by Kendall sends the ball up towards Denton and he goes to ground a little push in the back from Cowan so yeah let's, let's talk about this lineup because uh, Liam as we see him stood looking managerial is what I was going to say with his hands <gasps> oh Callum Murphy nearly intercepted on a loose Luke Simpson touch at the back there and Simpson just about recovers nearly an embarrassing moment for the Ashton keeper and Murphy nearly pounced on it but Geisley can keep the pressure on here as Devine's picked off in the middle of the park by Gilchrist pass forward straight to Reese Kendall Kendall sends it long up towards Denton Mitchell rolls backs into Denton Denton appeals for free kick but the referee Sam Parnby giving nothing that's a poor Reese Kendall clearance picked up by Byrne into the centre here's Lowe cuts inside onto his right foot still low low right foot oh it's a great save by Battersby looks to be flying in to Battersby le Battersby's left hand side and gets down and palms it away behind the post now for a corner yeah, excellent stop. First real good move of the game for the visitors, though, wasn't it? Yeah, alive and alert. It was a, a, a poor clearance by Kendall, and it was a good feat from Lowe on the edge of the box. Walker's pass is perfect over halfway and into Murphy on the far side. Murphy turns, and it's a good pass forward into Kendall. Kendall back to uh, uh, Chippendale into Ekpolo. Ekpolo breaks forward. You've got Devine with him. Devine into the area. Devine on the left hand side Devine left footed effort look to squeeze it in at Simpson's near post but it, the shot was lacking power and Simpson gathers but guys they recover Ashman pushing up high on that right hand side into Ekpolo Ekpolo's forward pass into Devine he's got Chippendale with him Chippendale is there it's up towards Denton at the back post and that looks like it should be a corner and it is much to the dismay of Luke Burke Tom Denton's header relentless stuff from guys they throw in taken quickly it's Kendall, cross goes into the box, cleared away by Kasani, but Ekpolo's going to be first to the second ball, and goes back to Stacey. It's a great pass by Stacey out to Kendall on the far side. Ball comes in from Kendall, and it was uh, it falls down Cowan into a decision, it was a lunge, and Cowan puts the ball behind for a guy's the corner. Nick, this is, a, what, a, what a first 12 minutes. Now Simpson rolls the ball out quickly. Burke, ball goes in behind towards Gilchrist, Gilchrist one-on-one -on -one with, oh, one -on -one with Battersby and Gilchrist's right-footed effort goes wide of the left-hand post, he was one-on-one -on -one with the guys, the goalkeeper and fails to put his effort on target, that's a real let-off for where, looks to be a little bit winded, still on all fours and looks to be in some discomfort but Ashton continue. ball is chipped in behind for Burn again, Ashton have tried that ball numerous times, it's still Burn. Ball drops, oh, drops for Nathan Law, who drills a right-footed effort. Well, escalated with nine, isn't it? So, anyway, Joe Stacey makes his way back on, as does Callum Chippendale. And just like that, the Lions are back up to 11. Ball goes in behind, it's towards, I think it's Kasani, cuts it onto his right foot. Kasani takes the shot, looks to bend it into the right corner, but skies his effort high and wide, and out for a guy's the goal kick. Battersby's ball, flick on one by Ashman. Murphy, lots of time and space to drive into it. Still Murphy. Puts him onto his right foot. He's got Chippendale with. Is he going to use him? He isn't. Murphy takes the shot right-footed. But it goes over the scoreboard. Hits the net in and out for an Ashton goal kick. Alongside another Ashton player. Three kicks taken. And it's straight into the wall. Ball comes forward again. Chance. Oh, and it's the shot is taken from an Ashton player. I think it was might have been Nathan Lowe. Uh, but it's scuffed and out for a guy's the goal kick. I think nothing too serious. Stacey, throw comes in towards Murphy. Ekpolo wins it back into the area. Ball drops for Lee Whelan, takes a shot. It's blocked off the back of Benny Kuto. And out and behind for a corner. Stacey uh, doesn't get his free kick high enough. Oh, it's a great touch from Chippendale to pluck out the sky. Shot taken by Kendall. But actually it's not because Kendall's a judge to a foul. His man prior to taking the shot and the free kick goes the way of Ashton United. And Chippendale puts the pressure on to try and win it back, but here's Newton. Far side. Cross comes in. It's towards. Oh, it was towards Cowan at the back post, but Reese Kendall gets back onto the line. He is, but Ashton are turning up the quality here, aren't they? And the tempo. Low. Into Kasani. Kasani cross comes across the face of goal. 
good hand on it by Battersby and Devine just gets rid of it sends it anyway goal kick taken Ashton playing out from the back but Rose's pass is loose and won by Bayek Polo here's Chippendale great opportunity Chippendale's shot goes wide look to just open up his body and bend it into the far right hand side yeah I'll be thankful for half time to come I think in this situation you know to, to get into the break at 0-0 no, given all the past few minutes have gone ball goes into the box it's missed by Stacey it drops up the feet of Byrne that's a great sliding challenge from Danny Devine a great recovery challenge and the ball goes out and behind for a Geisley not a Geisley corner it'll be an Ashton corner Kendall searching ball towards Denton Denton dragged to ground but Stacey wins the second ball last chance of the half you would think for Geisley Stacey cross comes in it's towards Murphy Murphy oh it's bouncing around in there and eventually goes over the bar and behind for a corner it was Murphy that won the header and Denton just couldn't manage to convert the, the chance Nick the half continues after Simpson takes the goal kick and Ashton can have one last foray for this 45 it's towards Lowe but Lowe tramples in the back of Aidan Walker and instead of a free kick being given the referee blows for half time so 45 on the clock here at Nethermore it's Geisley nil Ashton United nil and there it is Callum Chippendale gets us underway for the second half goes back to Aidan Walker who sends a long ball forward and Geisley will go from there Ashman Stacey it's a well angled cross up towards Murphy and it's cleared off the line but oh, Reese Kendall looked to have flicked it in oh god Callum Murphy it was a great header stooped high to, to get the connection I don't quite know how that stayed out Nick oh, oh. oh, oh. here's Byrne breaks into the area cross comes into the box headed away by Kendall back out to Lowe cross comes in again from Lowe into the feet of Kasani. Kasani's in the area Kendall pushes him to ground and it's going to be a penalty penalty it was Reese Kendall with a push in the back of Marcus Kasani and initially the referee looked like he wasn't going to give it before eventually pointing to the spot and as Lee Whelan, Callum Murphy and Tom Denton protest Reese Kendall's innocence it gives Steve Cunningham's side a chance to open the scoring from the spot it, 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 the way the referee's body motioned it was like he was going to run away from it and then Mike Dean style just pulled himself back in but anyway, Alexander Byrne steps in to take the penalty. Oh, and Battersby gets hands on it. But only is enough to palm it into the top corner. And Alexander Byrne opens the scoring. And on 53 minutes, it's Geisley nil, Ashton United 1. Oh, what a shame after a strong start to this second half. Ekpolo goes to ground under a challenge from Rose. Nothing given. Johnson turns his man. Chip and Dale, right footed effort. Oh, it's just wide of Simpson's post. But it was a great turn. And uh, to create the space for, for Gabriel Johnson, laid it off to Chip and Dale, tried to bend a right footed effort. Burke. Into Lowe, who goes back to Burke. Burke's got a bit of space to drive into here. Finds Lowe down the right goes back to Cowan deflected cross comes into the pockets towards Adams and Walker does well to put Adams off enough to win a goal kick for the Lions I thought you were going to tell me straight after uh, after I'd guessed our live I've never gone for that in a million years I never guessed it sorry throwing comes in it's towards Denton and Denton nearly nearly sends it into the top corner but misdirects his head up and goes out for a goal kick Adams that's a great first touch from Adams Kendall steps in and that's full time. So the final whistle goes here at Nethermore Park. It's finished here. Geisley nil, Ashton United won. Uh, the difference between the two sides was a 53rd minute penalty converted by Alexander Byrne after Reese Kendall brought down an Ashton United player inside the penalty area. How do you feel about the performance and the response you got from the players? I think when you look at the, how the players have acted today and conducted themselves, it's uh, it's fantastic. Bodies on the line, mm -hmm. people getting forward, people running themselves into the ground for the team. Um, a game, when you look at it, a game of small margins and mm -hmm. how ruthless the league is. I've just spoke to the ref in there. He said he changed his mind, waved it away, then changed his mind again. Mm -hmm. Liner said it wasn't a pen. We go mm -hmm. up the other end, pretty similar foul. Dens gets pulled to the floor. You don't get it. Mm -hmm. And then... 
liner tells me he's not allowed to comment on it. Um, and it, that happens a lot. They've got probably the hardest job. I mean, how uh, hard it is probably to be a, a level of consistency, but looking at our performance, it was 95 minutes of on the front foot, keeping the ball, getting chances. Um, the amount of chances we probably had, we I mean, no one on another day. We go and score three, four, and it drops to one of us, or we pull the trigger a bit early. So, again, it's a new system that the lads have been brought in to do. Um, in such a quick turnaround, we've had one training session, um, and the lads have took to it um, like gold. So, can't fault them. Um, me and Foz are very pleased with how the lads have conducted themselves because we've said how difficult it can be when obviously you lose someone as a manager um, and you're in that transition period. So, um, it's gone as smooth as possible, and I think if we play like that and how we played on Tuesday against Harrogate, I think going into Tuesday against Morpeth. Um, again, it's another three points up for grabs, and hopefully we can uh, be on the other end of the line right. this time. Um, you played with a, with a back four uh, today. Is that sort of out of preference, or just the players available today? Or? I just think with the players we've got available, yeah. and, um, how, what, the quality we have going forward mm -hmm. and within the midfield, um, the back four suits us probably a bit better. <laughs> um, I thought Josh was outstanding, um, playing with freedom. He looked like he was enjoying it. Um, the encouragement he was getting from lads, the encouragement from the sideline, I think it massively helps a lad like him because he's such a young kid himself. Um, he was fantastic. Um, and between the back four, obviously we've had Jam missing, we've got Pratty Band as well, so people are into chop and change and people are asking to do two jobs, but we've got a group of lads in there that can do that, um, which obviously makes my life a lot harder because people are fighting for places, people are picking up knocks and injuries. So, um, yeah, it was just sort of what we thought was would be the best for, obviously, today. Right, and... Shortly before that penalty, was it, I think it was Colin Murphy had her off the corner with a great save, yeah, wasn't it? Probably, if you watch the highlights, I reckon when they go out, there's probably three or four that have been cleared either off yeah, the line, yeah. just got over the bar. Um, and like you say, on another day, you go on the yeah, other end of that yeah. and you're ruthless enough to go and be 2 3 4 nil up. Um, that's probably since they scored. I don't think they got really in our half. Mm. I think obviously they managed the game while well. they've got a lot of experienced lads mm. in there. Cunny does a really good job and I've known him for years and any team he's had, they're experienced enough to know when to play in areas and things like that. But um, yeah, we just went on the right end of it today. I think like I said, the penalty probably sums it up. Ollie's guessed the right way. Yeah. A couple of more fingers on it and he <laughs> saves it. Um, but other than that, lads like Kyle, young kid, come through the academy, yes. came on. Yeah. Don't look out of place, Miguel yeah. coming on. Yeah. And again, you're asking lads to do things that maybe might not be normal for them. Um, but they've come straight into it and bought into what obviously what everyone wants and, and uh, it's been fantastic to see. Tom Denton won a lot of ball in the, in the air today, didn't he? Just didn't quite drop in. Yeah, I think like I say, Dents, people just seem to think obviously we're just going to hit his head and, and do <laughs> that, but Dents knows that and the lads know that he's capable of doing it with yeah. his and obviously he's, the career he's had, oh, he's, he's, you can go and see it for yourself, he's a, he's a fantastic asset to yeah. any team. Yeah. Um, and again, Callan and Gab's running off him today. It caused troubles. Um, people closer to Dents, people getting off him, picking up those second balls. I thought Prince, Danny, and Lee um, were superb again. So again, these, I can't have a go at anyone in there. The way they've conducted themselves, the way they've performed today, even to the last whistle. Um, but unfortunately, in this league, as we all know, if you don't on the right end of a decision and you don't get some yourself, it can bite you in the butt. And it, it did seem a clear penalty against Tom Dents actually when he was pulled yeah, back I in think the area. If theirs is a penalty then again it's that level of consistency yeah. of setting the standard of that has to be a foul um, two minutes after Danny gets kicked in the head putting his head in a place where he's going to get hurt they have one up the other end and get given it we don't um, and it's the hard, like I say it's the hardest job I understand that um, they are going to get a lot of abuse I know probably on the sideline it's a bit, a bit different being on the sideline and, and some of the stuff but I'd just rather have someone be a bit more honest a line that tells me it's not a penalty then says you can't comment on the decision going our way because it's not in his half but when you just want an honest conversation to the end of the day we're human beings yeah. we're going to make mistakes just put your hand up and say yeah I've made uh, I've made a mistake and I'm like I said I've just spoke to him in there he said when you watch it back it's a clear penalty if I watch it back and it is fair dues but then I know for a full fact if that's caused if that's a foul the one on Dents is a foul um, so either way that's where you like to, to be sort of evened up but then again like I say people look at the scoreline and probably think OK, it's a, it's a great result for Ashton, you can see from the reaction, mm -hmm. the pressure we put them under in that last 20 minute period and the way they've reacted, obviously, after the game, which we would do if we won a game of football, at the end of the day we turn up to win. Um, but yeah, so like I say, put it, under, put it under the carpet and Tuesday we know what we need to do, um, we know what little things we need to work on and hopefully... It's obviously a long journey for us all, but we go and get those uh, three vital points. I thought we were a real threat off set pieces today, actually, weren't we? Yeah, the quality we've got. Um, Joe Stacey, Danny, Kendall, 
um, anyone that can put a ball into the box and again they're probably things that we probably need to utilise a bit more at times like Joe Stacey's put a couple in Kendall's put a couple of throws in where balls are bouncing six yard box we have enough players in the box where we should be making first second third contacts um, even as a player we pride ourselves on that um, so it's probably just been a bit more cuter a lot of nudges in the back go down by the fouls similar things to what they did but again they've got a group of a lot of experienced lads in their team and if you look at our team compared to theirs lads that have played a lot higher um, but again at home you back ourselves against anyone um, it's like I said, it's just unfortunate today. It's not gone. The fairy tale ended at the start that obviously everyone wanted, but great experience for me. Fantastic from the lads, and more importantly, we just focus on Tuesday now. Have we got any players back on Tuesday? I know, I know Jamil's Jam's back, yeah, yeah. Jamil's back, so we're gaining massive yeah. asset to us. Um, obviously, Pratty's still banned. Brownie, yeah. obviously, picked up a knock against Harrogate, so hopefully um, he's right. He's right. Um, Foley's back training from yeah. obviously his ACL yeah. and um, George Proctor's probably about two weeks away since his operation right. of getting back into full contact training so yeah. as and when any sort of new management get announced yeah. obviously whatever happens um, lads are coming back into fitness yeah. like Brownie today it could have been easily I said to him sort of I don't want that I'm not going to risk him yeah. Yeah. I said there's more important things in terms of his own career yeah. and whoever comes in the last thing I want is him being injured because of some, a decision I've made um, so games come thick and fast we've got Tuesday to go to train Thursday and then obviously it's a free weekend on the Saturday um, so again it's something else where we can work on things and get bodies back ready for the following games and Tuesday is, um, is, is 4G isn't it does that affect the way you I think if anything like you say with how it was Tuesday compared to today yeah. probably a bit more sticky than <laughs> slick it was on Tuesday and that's just the nature of it but Lads, lads have trained in Astro, lads have played in Astro turf. Everyone knows that the ball might bounce different and things like that. But Morpeth is a great, it's a great pitch up there. It's a brand new one. The ball is true to itself. Obviously, when you play on there, um, the way we've played today, again, if anything, it benefits us with those little balls that maybe don't make it and things like that. But lads have got to adapt to it. We know in this league, there's probably a lot more Astro turf pitches now than there ever has been, um, and it's the way that clubs are moving forward. So. That's why we train on them and get used to it, um, and you can't blame the pitch. We've got enough quality in there where we know that we're good enough to be competing week in, week out. Um, and it, like I say, it's just sort of focusing on Tuesday now and having no excuses going into the game. We can go in there full-hearted and uh, hopefully get the three points. Thanks very much, Liam. No worries. Good luck Tuesday.